Good morning and welcome to St Helens or this morning. This will be the last service that we actually record in this way, at least for the moment. But we welcome you uh, whether you're worshipping here in church or whether you're at home with friends or family or indeed on your own. My name's Penny Avan and I look forward to leading you through this service and to bringing God's word to us this morning. On this seventh Sunday after Trinity, we're going to conclude our series on Christian discipleship with the theme, Living and Believing. So we begin with some words of praise and an opening prayer. Great is the Lord and worthy of all praise. Praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honour, power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Alleluia. Amen. Loving Lord, fill us with your life-giving, joy-giving, peace-giving presence, that we may praise you with our lips and serve you with our lives. Amen. We're now going to continue that theme of worship as we sing or listen to our opening worship song, The Splendour of a King Clothed in Majesty. It takes us to the very throne of heaven, with Jesus sitting with the Father, reigning in glory. The splendor of the King, clothed in let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God! Oh, sing with me! How great! Sing with me how great is 
praise our God and always see how great, how great is our God. We come now to that point in our service where we need to put ourselves right with this great and glorious King we have come to worship. Hebrews says, we run the race that is set before us, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Therefore, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely bringing them to Jesus in penitence and faith. Lord Jesus, we confess that we have failed you, as did your disciples. We ask for your mercy and help. We are often self-centred and gloss over the needs of others. Lord, forgive. Christ, have mercy. We fail to ease the pain and suffering of others where we can. Lord, forgive. Christ, have mercy. We have condoned evil and dishonesty or failed to strive for justice. Lord, forgive. Christ, have mercy. We run away from those who abuse you or deny your existence. Lord, forgive. Christ, have mercy. We forget to acknowledge you as our Lord and Redeemer and to love you with all our heart. Lord, forgive. Christ, have mercy. And so may the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. So as God's forgiven people, we have the collet for today and you might like to say it along with us. Generous God, you give us gifts and make them grow. Though our faith is small as a mustard seed, make it grow to your glory and the flourishing of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so before Julian reads God's word to us, we have our next worship song. It's one that reminds us that it's often when everything around us is stripped away and we are just us and God that we can truly see him and know him for who he is. When the music fades, when the music fades, all is stripped away and I simply come, longing just to bring Something that's of worth That will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song 
for a song in itself is not what you have required. It's such much deeper within, through the way things appear, you're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. King of endless worth, no one could express. How much you deserve Though I'm weak and poor All I have is yours Every single breath I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required you search much deeper within Through the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship And it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'll bring you more than a song, more than a song for you. I'll bring you more than a song, I'll bring you more than a song, more than a song for you. I'll bring you more than a song, I'll bring you more than a song, more than a song. Today's reading is from 1 Peter, chapter 4, verses 7 to 13. The end of all things is near. Therefore, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers over a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another, without grumbling. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, he should do it as one speaking the very words of God. If anyone serves, he should do it with the strength God provides, so that in all things, God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. So let's have a think about that reading from 1 Peter. One of the things that struck a lot of people during lockdown has been the sheer creativity which has been released. It's taken all kinds of forms, from virtual choirs and concerts to online exercise and even online learning. And then there's been the discovery of new ways to supply the essentials of life to those who've had to isolate. And I suppose the two defining moments for many of us during this time have been the inspirational walks, first of Sir Tom Moore, and then the more perhaps heroic efforts of little Tony Hudgel. Nearer to home, we've had to explore some creativity too in the way that we've offered worship on YouTube. And I want to pay a personal tribute here to Ben, who's actually been the, the mastermind behind all the creativity. And all that's really about the importance of gifts. All kinds of gifts have been explored and used over the last few months. And the importance of gifts have been emphasized here by Peter. He tackles it in a very different way from Paul in Romans and 1 Corinthians or even in Ephesians. He's less concerned with the naming of particular gifts, but more about how we should use them. In verse 10 of that passage, he says, each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. He puts that saying in the context of three particular things. The first is that the end of all things is near. Those words remind me of when I was working at Broadcasting House and Often, when I got out of the, the tube at Oxford Street, there would be this man strolling up and down Oxford Street with a billboard <clears throat> on the back and on the front saying, the end of all things is near. And I have to say, most people just ignored him. Some people got out their cameras, but for the most part, it was just words and a rather odd character. But actually, those words are important. It's good to remember that we are living in the end times. And the way we're to use that time is vital. The second context is prayer. And Peter says, be clear-minded and self-controlled so that you can pray. Prayer has been really important during lockdown because it's a way in which we can communicate with our Father when we've been denied being able to meet together for worship. And thirdly, it's love. Like Paul, Peter emphasizes that gift of love. And perhaps he was reminded of that time at the Last Supper when Jesus said to them all as they sat round the table, love one another as I have loved you. So the gifts that we receive from the Father are to be used to make the most of the time that we have, to live prayerfully and to live with love. Those gifts remind us that we have a God who is creative and the creativity comes through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Peter wants to emphasize that we've all been given gifts, some of us speaking, others for service. And whatever those gifts are, they're not for our kudos but to be a means of expressing God's love. Sadly, some people try to collect gifts a bit like 
when I was a brownie guider, my really enthusiastic brownies used to try and collect as many badges as they could to put on their arms. <clears throat> in those days, brownie uniforms were designed with that in mind. And even these days, many brownies have sashes absolutely covered with badges. But that's not what Peter means. That's not the Christian way when it comes to the use of gifts. Quite often I'm asked, but that's all very well, but how do I discover what gift I have? Well, often it's by accident or by being noticed by others as we're doing something. Almost always our spiritual gifts are discovered as we're in active service. For example, in my last parish, we began um, a ministry of prayer for healing, and we used to have a healing service on a fairly regular basis. And we discovered that one of the members of the congregation, at least, had a very real gift for prayer for healing. And whenever Marion prayed for people, you could almost guarantee that they would receive healing in one way or another. She wasn't the only one, but she was certainly the one who had a very notice noticeable gift in that way. So one of the ways in which we as a Christian community can help one another is in the discernment of spiritual gifts. But Peter underlines here a really important motive that we're to use them with the strength which God provides. And our aim is not to bring glory to ourselves, but to give glory to him. I have met Christians who, on reading Paul's list of, of gifts, particularly that list in 1 Corinthians 12, are concerned that they haven't a gift maybe that's on that list. Well, Peter avoids that danger by not giving us a long list of gifts at all. But he speaks of hospitality, of speaking, and of service. They're pretty broad categories when you think about it. For example, speaking isn't just doing what I'm doing now and preaching. But it's about teaching. It's about those informal conversations that we have over the phone or out in the street. It may even be the way we speak through the emails that we send or the tweets that we, we put on our smartphones. There are all way, kinds of ways in which we can use speaking for God. And what about hospitality? Well, it's not just about offering meals. It's actually about welcoming others to a group or to a service or to something else that we're arranging at the time. And service, well, those gifts are endless. A few weeks ago, I mentioned a community in Southampton which had been transforming the lives of people around them. One of the ways in which that happened in the early days was the gathering together of a group of young unemployed men. And it was they who were the ones who used to cook the meals and offer hospitality to the community. Many of those young men discovered not only did they have the gift of being able to cook, but of being able to welcome and to work as part of a team. And it was those gifts and skills that really made such a difference to their lives, as well as to the lives of those who enjoyed their hospitality. But there are other creative gifts as well. The other day I was reading about a Christian artist, and this is what he says. As an artist, 
I love to bring images and words and symbols to people's hearts from God's heart. And I hope and pray that I would bring comfort, encouragement and strength to those that I paint for. I call them prayer paintings. People will often ask what I'm doing and I will just reply, I'm painting prayers for people. Can I paint something for you? Nine times out of ten, people will say, oh, yeah, okay then. Then I'll pray and ask what it is that God wants to say to that person. Sometimes it's a symbol. Sometimes it's a scene. Or maybe I'll hear the words of a psalm or a song. One morning, I read in Proverbs about the one who sticks closer than a brother. I was on Barsley Island at the time, serving as a chaplain. I went down to the cafe, and there I met some people who'd just come off the boat. That verse about one who sticks closer than a brother came to mind. A couple came up to ask me what I was doing. The woman seemed pretty emotional. Can I paint something for you, I asked. And the lady said, would you really paint something for me? I'd love to, I said, and she started crying. I drew a picture of a sister and a brother and that verse at the bottom. I gave it to the lady and she said, the reason I'm crying is that my brother is going through a really hard time and I'm really concerned about him at the moment. We knew we needed to come to this island, but we didn't realise that we would meet someone who would be able to touch our hearts as you have. They left that island, not only with a painting, but having met with God. Well, maybe you don't have that kind of gift, but maybe you do, and maybe you won't know until you try. But there are all sorts of ways in which God can enhance our creativity for his glory. Paul ends this section by referring to persecution and suffering, as Roger touched on last week. And we can redeem the time that we live whether we're facing suffering or whether life for us is not too different from normal, by using whatever it is that God has given to us, not to bring attention to ourselves, but to give him the glory. As we use those gifts prayerfully, who knows how he will use them? But I'm sure two things will result. One is that people will know that they are deeply loved. And the other is that in the end, God will have the glory himself. Amen. We're going to perhaps sum up those words in the words of our next worship song. It's easy sometimes to feel overwhelmed and not least to feel a bit overwhelmed by the demands that scripture sometimes appears to make on us. This worship song deals with that.
And now we're going to turn to prayer. And our prayers today are going to be led by Thelma Jones, who has been on the, um, the team here at St. Helens uh, during um, the last year or two, preaching and leading. As we come to pray together, at the end of each section of prayers, let's say together, come and fill us with the gifts of your spirit. So let's pray. Gracious Father, you promise to give us all that we need to live in obedience and service to you. Forgive our blindness when we fail to see your glory and our deafness in listening to your voice. Help us to be alert to your call and to recognise you as the one who calls us to make the most of our time that we have and to use every gift to enrich the lives of others as we grow your kingdom here. Come and fill us with the gifts of your spirit. We pray for our world, places of unrest and persecution, for the increasing tension with China and Russia, and for countries where there is little trust in governments and those in authority, for those who live in extreme poverty and with little medical help, especially during this time of pandemic. Come and fill them with the gifts of your spirit. We pray for those who face an uncertain future because of unemployment, lack of adequate housing, or no home at all, or perhaps from ill health or abuse. We pray too for young people changing schools or preparing to begin the next stage of their education. Many of them have the uncertainty of what a new term will look like. Gracious Father, reach out to them through our arms of love and help us not only to speak of the security we have in you, but to take action where we can to bring love, peace and hope for the future. Come and fill us with the gifts of your spirit. We pray for those who serve us in so many ways, not least healthcare staff, teachers, retail workers and delivery drivers, council workers and the police. Where their role makes them vulnerable to infection or abuse, please protect them from harm and give them a sense of their worth and the contribution to the communities they serve. Come and fill them with the gifts of your spirit. We pray for ourselves as we move forward into a new phase of ministry. We pray especially for Tim, Emma and the girls as they prepare for life among us. And we pray for our brothers and sisters at Christ Church with whom we will have a closer fellowship in future. Give us a sense of expectancy and a heart for worship and mission. Come and fill us with the gifts of your spirit. Merciful Father, accept these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we're going to sing together that wonderful hymn, Tell Out My Soul. To And so before we go and obey those words to tell out my soul in the world outside, we finished with prayer and blessing. O Lord and Father, from whom comes every good and perfect gift, keep us walking in the light of Jesus to shine in your world that many may come to believe and live in you Jesus, our Saviour and Redeemer. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each one of you this week 
and evermore. Amen. Next week, our worship will be back in church at St. Helens at 10.30. And we begin a series of five services based on the growth of the missionary church, as Luke records it in Acts. Have a good week and stay safe. Thank you.